Have you ever wondered why some Milky Way shots look insane even when the actual Milky Way doesn't pop, while others have an amazing Milky Way? But the photo looks boring overall. When I started, I kept getting shots that looked average, even after I learned how to capture an epic Milky Way. But after tons of shots, I realized it was the composition that made all the difference. So in this video, I will show you the exact changes I made to my compositions to get my photos to really pop. And the simple foreground setup that changed my landscapes for good. To start, let me demonstrate the power of composition. These two images are from the same location, but they get apart. I took the first one during my trip to La Palma in July 2024, and the second one during my La Palma workshop in August 2025. The conditions were about the same. The quality and editing of the sky are similar. The foreground is literally the same scene, just from a few meters apart. But the composition of the second scene is a lot more powerful. And that makes it a favorite image of mine. That's the power of composition. So what can we actually change in our compositions to make them powerful? You have probably noticed that most general composition tips don't really work for Milky Way photos. That's because in most genres of photography, the sky isn't half the image or the main subject. So instead of more generic advice, I'll just make it simple for you and I'll give you a really handy framework to use. Just remember the acronym FC. F for flow and C for connection. Let me show you how that looks in my photos. To achieve flow, we have to lead the eye through the shot. We can do it directly, like these two photos here, where I have found a leading line in the landscape and and used it to lead the eye through the image, which creates a strong sense of flow and is really easy to pull off. But in most cases, you won't have a leading line to use. So what else can you do to create flow? Look at this image. There is no leading line, but the sense of flow is even stronger than the previous two shots. The landscape is actually creating the flow because of the many layers and that S-curve created by them. For this shot, it's actually that the foreground starts from so close to the lens that it gives a 3D effect, creating again a strong sense of flow through the composition. And for this one, it's the light painting that creates the flow. If you start from the bottom of the shot, your eye moves upwards like that because of it. So when you are composing your photo, think of how you can create the sense of flow in your image. If you are lucky enough to be at a location with amazing vast landscapes, maybe use that for the flow. If there is a leading line, of course experiment with that too. But if you find that the landscape is a bit boring, you can also light paint to create depth and thus flow in the image. Just get a dim torch and shine it through the scene as you capture your foreground. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a foreground light painting tutorial. But what about the connection though. How can you achieve that? What I have found is that the nightscape becomes really powerful when you create a sense of connection between the earth and space, or even better, humanity in space. Let me demonstrate. This is one of my favorite shots from last year. The tent and the building in the background create the connection. When you look at it, you see the Milky Way and the comet, but you also think, wait, there was someone there experiencing this moment. And a photo is really nothing more than just a moment captured in a digital file. If the moment doesn't seem nice to start with, the photo will most likely not be that great too. So if we have to, we play with the scene to create the nice moment. Like, look at this image from my latest workshop in Tenerife. Two explorers finding their way through the landscape, looking at the stars. That's the connection at its peak. And look at this shot. I took it when I was invited to an observatory in the French Prines this summer. The building, the observatories, the people observing the night sky, they all create a sense of connection. This shot is from La Balmagne. The observatories create a sense of connection because you imagine that not only the Milky Way is there, but humans build machines to observe it and study it. So basically, when you are composing your image, think of ways you can create the connection effect. It can be a building, a tent, a person standing there, or 
anything that makes us remember that the Milky Way is actually part of our world and not something completely unrelated to us. Now, what happens when you combine both flow and connection? You get amazing images like this. We all have both a flow and a connection aspect, but it doesn't mean you should always use both. So don't stress about it. If only one of the two works for a composition you have in mind, that's totally okay. There is though a simple setup you can use to achieve both easily. It's what I usually do, especially when I can't find anything else interesting to shoot. I basically create the scene by standing there and holding a light. It sounds stupidly simple, but if you take a look at my favorite shots, most of them use this setup. So how can you capture foregrounds like this? First, you need a dim light source. Try to find something that gives even illumination in every direction and not something focused like a torch. I have this moon lamp from Move Shoot Move, but it doesn't seem to be available anymore. So if you want to get something similar, maybe search for a rechargeable orb light. But you can also use a rechargeable lantern if you find a good one. Or just a dim torch and a reflector in front of it. Just get creative. Also, I usually turn on the light for a second or two and then turn it off to avoid overexposing it. But since your light might be different, you'll need to experiment to see what works best. Start from one to two seconds though, because most probably that will be enough. So my main foreground shot is a long exposure, like two minutes. Obviously, I can't stand still that long. So I take a second shorter one, say 15 seconds, with a higher ISO to match the brightness. Each time you halve your shutter speed, just double your ISO to keep your foreground brightness about the same. For example, Dropping from 2 minutes to 15 seconds means you double the ISO 3 times from your starting value. So if you shot the first photo at 1000, you go to 2000, 4000 and 8000. You can also use an exposure calculator and this makes it a lot easier. Anyway, it's also better to take your time to get into position and use either a remote trigger or have someone else press the shutter for you when you are ready. I don't want you using a timer and rushing into position next to a cliff or something. And another pro tip is to take multiple shots with different poses or even at different positions in the scene. And when you are back home editing, you can choose the best one. And you can always not include yourself after all and just use a long exposure if you, for some reason, don't like any of the shots with you inside. So in this video, you have learned my flow and connection composition framework so you can instantly level up your Netscape game. But if you are shooting towards light pollution, even if you end up capturing an amazing foreground, if the light pollution in your sky is too strong, all that effort goes to waste. So watch this video next to learn how to deal with light pollution so your sky can go from this to this.